Right. We're here in a place of tremendous healing. God calls us here. Our Lady calls us here. So that we can be renewed and strengthened and refreshed in our faith and in our life. And that we can bring that back to our parishes, to our country, and help to change also. And one of the things that we become aware of here is the presence of God and the presence of Our Lady. You can almost touch that presence as you walk around and everybody's praying and everybody's talking about how great the place is and sharing stories about their faith. And that's what life should be like. And that's what God wants. Because I remember in the old catechism, one of the first questions was, who made you? And the answer was, God made me. Followed immediately by, why did God make you? And God made you to know, love and serve him here on earth and to be happy with him forever in heaven. And that's the desire of God. God wants us to be happy. God wants us to be with him in heaven. But God also gives us free will. And in the world today, we see the power of Satan, the enemy of God at work. We see it in governments. We see it in so many places. We see it even in the church. We see the power of Satan at work. And I remember being really shocked uh, in the autumn of last year when a priest in Kerry preached a sermon which was completely Catholic. He said nothing that wasn't Catholic. And people walked out. And the next day I heard an 82-year-old woman being interviewed on the radio and she said, for goodness sake, he's trying to take us back to the 50s and the 60s. Well, I would have said to her, he's trying to take you back to Jesus and the apostles. Amen. And what would I have said to those who are waiting? I would have said to them, well, I see people walking out now and I'll say the same to you as I said to Jesus, as Jesus said to the apostles and to the listeners. In John 6, when he was speaking about the Eucharist, when he said, do you also want to go away? Peter said, no, who can we go to? You have the message of eternal life. So those words bring with them a great responsibility, a responsibility to try and live the gospel, to try and preach the gospel by our lives and by our words, and not to be afraid to do so. We see in the States, in India, in many places, churches been burned. The other day, a seminarian was burned alive in, in Nigeria. <coughs> terrible things are still happening in the world, and we can look at them. But we can forget that terrible things are happening in our own countries, whether it be in Ireland or in Scotland or in England or any place in the English-speaking world. Terrible things are happening because we are afraid to stand up. We are afraid to speak out. We are afraid to discourage. We are afraid to embarrass. And yet we see the drag queens walking through the streets of New York shouting, we are after your children. We want your children. A few months ago, I met a lady in Scotland and she had a six-year-old child who had autism. And the wee girl came home heartbroken one day and crying, and the mother had to wait a long time to find out why she was crying. And she was crying because she said, Mommy, I am a girl, and I always want to be a girl. And today, somebody came into our class and told us, because we are six years of age, we have to decide whether we want to be a boy or a girl for the rest of our lives. To me, that is child abuse, real child abuse. And yet it goes on and we stand back and we say or do nothing about it. We see that many symbols of faith have been taken over by those who are not of faith. We see the rainbow, the symbol of God's love that he would never again destroy the world with water, with floods. And we see it been taken over 
by the LGBTQP ZXY. <laughs> and we see other things also been taken over. We see the church been infiltrated by Satan. And what is Our Lady saying? Our Lady brings us here because she wants to strengthen us, because she wants to enlighten us, because she wants to show us how we should live. And where does she point us to? She points us to the scriptures. She points us to the word of God to read the scriptures. I remember when I was in secondary school, there was a priest from the cathedral, his name was Father McVan. He was an elderly man, possibly about my own age at the time, but I am now. And he, when he was first ordained, he went to Scotland for five years. And he said he was standing one day at the bus stop and he was getting terrible abuse from a Presbyterian minister and several people because he was Catholic. And the Presbyterian minister was smoking a pipe. So he said, I was lucky, my bus came first and I just put one foot on the platform and I turned around to the minister and I said, see when you go home, tear another page out of the Bible that doesn't suit you and light your pipe with it. <laughs> and that's actually what's happening. That is what's happening today. If something doesn't suit us, we maybe not tear a page out of the Bible, but we ignore it. What Pope Benedict spoke about as relativism. If it feels good, then it's okay. If it's, if it's sinful, it's sinful. And that sin needs to be brought before the Lord. And I would encourage anybody here today who has encouraged somebody to have an abortion, anybody who had an abortion, or anybody who in the referendum in Ireland voted for abortion, which was aiding and encouraging abortion in that country, to bring that sin to the Lord, to ask forgiveness. Don't bring it back with you. In the gospel, the, Jesus says to the man with the withered hand, come out, stand, stand in front of us. We are called to stand in front of the world today and to proclaim the truth of the gospel. And the word of God doesn't change. Jesus says, not one dot, not one stroke will disappear from the law until its purpose is fulfilled. And he said, I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And that is our responsibility as followers of Jesus, not to be afraid, not to vote for people who we know are going to pass laws about abortion or any, any of those things which are against our faith because we are encouraging them and enabling them. Being a Catholic in the world today calls for strength. It calls for grace in our lives. Jesus said, would that you are hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I could vomit you out of my mouth. So let's be hot. Let's be real soldiers for Christ. Much better to suffer for Jesus in this life than to suffer for him for eternity in hell. And the modern thinking, of course, is that hell doesn't exist. It does exist. And some people will get an awful shock when they find themselves there. But it does exist. But we are called, and especially those who are called to Medjugorje, we are called to be strengthened, to be enlightened, and to go forth strong in our faith to confront the world. As priests, our task is to help people to get to heaven. We don't help them by watering down the gospel. We don't help them by forgetting to mention sin. We don't help them by forgetting to mention hell. We're just encouraging them on the slippy, ro on the slippy road there. So don't be afraid of who you are. You are sons and daughters of God. You are brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. You have got the power of the Holy Spirit in you. You are called to witness. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for God is with you. And if you have any sin on your soul, please leave it here. 
and let this be the pilgrimage of your life where you change and where you begin to really listen to the word of God, where you begin to begin to love again the Eucharist, where you, when you go back to home, where you go to Mass when you can, where you go to confessions, as Our Lady says every month, where you do penance and where you pray. And of course, prayer is a decision. Some people will say, well, I haven't time to pray, Father. I'm too busy watching EastEnders or Coronation Street or football. Prayer is the food for our soul. The food to prepare us. It's an appetizer, if you like, to prepare us for receiving the Eucharist. So I pray that you will all have a wonderful pilgrimage. You're probably saying, that old fellow up there, he's given us a rough time this morning. <laughs> I'm praying, I'm preaching because I care about you and I want you to go to heaven. And please pray for me.